What's up guys? Welcome to Jordan's Film Quest. Today's adventure brings me down here to Miami. I've made it to Florida. I'm doing one of my all-time favorite movies. It is the sequel to the original Fast and the Furious. I'm talking about Too Fast, Too Furious, filmed right here in Miami. It has been 19 years since this movie, and I was only 11 years old when this movie came out. So I guess you could say it has been my dream, not only to visit Florida, but to see the filming locations for this movie. And I think it's only appropriate that I wear this shirt while doing these locations. With that being said, there are a ton of filming locations here in Florida, and I'm only gonna do some of the more iconic locations because I'm on a bit of a time crunch. I wanna get as much done as I possibly can. With that being said, I'm at the location now of the very first race in the movie. And I'm gonna stop talking because I'm super excited to get into this. So without further ado, welcome to the official Too Fast, Too Furious filming locations. All right, all right, all right, fire them up. We go live in five. It's time for ignition and straight up automobile pimping. The location of the first race right here on this block. Now during the filming, there's cars and tons of people lined up and down these streets right here and right behind me right here is the garage where Tej calls Brian he goes yo what's up man you want to race tonight Brian goes yeah you know I could use the cash he goes all right you got four minutes and then that's when Tej comes walking out he's like yeah we go live in five comes walking out this garage door right here walking over this way and it's where Suki and I think his name is Jules or Julius and Slapjack were waiting on their fourth all the while listening to music people are out here dancing having a good time this building can be seen definitely in the background so their cars would have been parked there was a spray paint line across the road. I want to say it was probably about right here in this general area. So as Brian makes his way through Miami, he pulls up and Suki's like, shit, it's Brian. And Brian pulls up along the side right there on that side. And then Tej walks up and he's like, was happening dude y'all they got deep pockets real deep because what do you say we kick it a nickel okay 35 large three single i could literally quote this movie like it's nothing so that being said i'm going to walk out to the middle of the road here as soon as i get a second and i will show you the view of them what the road looks like that they would have taken off. So as they would have parked right here, right where I'm standing is where Brian's car would have been. So it was sort of like that. Now there is construction going on behind me, so I'm not going to be able to really pinpoint a lot of things, but you guys get pretty much the idea that this is the exact location that it was filmed. And there was a building here in this spot at one point. It is demolished. I really hope they're not tearing this building down because I had a friend tell me that this building was featured in another movie called Rock of Ages. It was the Bourbon Room. And Unfortunately, it looks like they are demolishing it because they're gutting out the inside and starting with the back of it. So that sucks. But it is still cool though, nonetheless, to be here right where the first race took place. All right, so for this next location, it's gonna be a twofer. There's two locations. I didn't realize how close they were, but I didn't think I was gonna be able to see one of them, but it's actually, they're actually like right here. Check this out. 
So being that I was just over where the first race took place, this is the bridge right here that they jump across during the first race. Now a boat just went underneath it. That's why the bridge is going down. So the other location that's right here has been demolished. It's a little bit farther on into the movie when Brian and Roman meet up with Bilkins and Agent Markham. And he's like, you think you can shoot at me? I'm a goddamn federal agent. It was the East Coast Fisheries. And as you can tell, this new building has been in the works of being built. That has been built. So I do believe that they would have parked. Let's see, I'll get across the street here. There is a shot in the movie that can be seen sort of like this. So that bridge can be seen in the background. But this is definitely, is that Toretto? It definitely sucks that this building got torn down because it's one of the ones that I really wanted to see where the little hideout spot that Brian and Roman come to with Markham, Bilkins, and the other guy. <laughs> and Brian has that famous quote where he's like, I said, forget about it, cook. Oh, birds. Yeah, would have been right here. I didn't put this together until now. But being that this movie is a sequel to the first movie, if you watch the end credits of the first Fast and the Furious movie, Dom drives off in the sunset in a red Chevelle. Now look at this. A red Chevelle has just showed up. The irony is insane with this one. That is freaking cool. That is a gorgeous car. Okay, so here I am at the next location. I'm at the former spot of Tej's garage. Now we're first introduced to Tej's garage in the beginning of the movie when Tej calls Brian and asks if he wants to race tonight and he gets in the skyline and pulls pulls out and drives all the way up to where the race is. And then there were some other scenes filmed here where uh, Brian introduces Roman to Tej. There's like a whole big party going on out here and then later on in the movie when Verone and his boys show up looking for Fuentes and Brian and then Verone tells them that they're going to be driving with Roberto and Enrique. So those scenes were filmed here and I'm going to pinpoint a few from each scene and just show you how much has changed since then. So let's check it out. Unfortunately, the building was demolished. I don't know if it was just built for the movie or if it actually was a working building at one point, but now it looks like a parking lot for some boat tours. But right here in this general area is where Tej's garage would have been. Probably right in between these two parking spots is where the garage would have been because Brian pulls out right here and goes straight out. But there's that scene, and then later on, when Brian brings Roman to meet Tej, um, these buildings can actually be seen in the background, and they pull up, pull up through here. This garage and this wing surf shop can be seen in the background as well as they're walking through the parking lot right here, and they're about to talk to jimmy and he's like yo i need you to check out the uh spider and the evo and jimmy's like where'd you get an evo from and he's like shit it's a long story so that being said that whole party scene where everyone's out here racing jet skis and having a huge freaking party and roman is introduced to tej it looks like the dock is still here right there man if this doc could talk <laughs> I'm a poet and didn't know it so I'm gonna walk over here and I'll show you what 
what it looks like because these giant boats are in the way. So out here is where people would have been swimming, racing jet skis. And these little islands out here can be seen as well. It's freaking awesome. I really wish I could just get on the dock just to say that I've walked here, but still cool though, nonetheless. And then for the other scene, well actually, I'll go back to that previous scene when Roman meets Tej. Roman asks Tej if he can crash at Brian's and he goes, no, what's wrong with your place, man? He goes, nah, he got bad habits. So, when the building was here, Brian's little cottage his little houseboat would have been parked right there for that little walkway is to get on that boat. So then I'll skip ahead to when um, Fuentes wakes up Brian and she's like, Brian, I heard that they're going to kill you. They're going to put a bullet in your head when the deal is all done. And then Roman comes in. He goes, yo, homeboy, you need to check her. And then he walks out. And Enrique and Roberta, Roberto are looking for her. And then they get into a bit of a scuffle. And then Verone walks up and he goes, you boys better learn to get along because tomorrow Roberta and Enrique, Roberto and Enrique will be riding along with you guys. He would have stood right there down at the end of the dock. And there is also one other location over here that I would like to point out. I'll go over there here in just a second, but over here, We'll go back to that scene where Jimmy tells them to check out, or Brian tells Jimmy to check out the Evo and the spider. Roberto and Enrique are sitting in a parked car and then Tyrese lights their window on fire. They were parked right over there, right in front of, sort of where that black car is parked. And we'll head over there here in just a second and all the show you some shots over there as well but yeah it just totally sucks that tesh's garage got torn down and it's nothing but a empty parking lot now so i'm over here on minnesota street right across is where brian would have said yo those guys have been following us since we left verone's house talking about roberto and enrique they would have been part sort of where that silver SUV is parked there's a shot like this you can see the inside of that garage right there's like alien and Fidel they kiss my ass from toasting the lights of his out front windshield on fire fairly early in the morning and people are already out bicycling and running and whatnot so in the film, there would have been a crane shot coming from this direction, showing Brian and Roman pull in right through here. And they would have stopped probably about right in this area. And there's a shot sort of like this that can be seen the entire Tej's garage area. And I know it sucks that it's gone, but I'm here to document history. And that's what I am doing. All right, so here I am at the next location. I am at Carter Verone's house. Fun fact, this house actually belongs to Sylvester Stallone, Rocky himself. Yes, he actually has a house down here in Florida, but he let them use his house for filming and it couldn't have been any better. And unfortunately, I can't get inside. Um, looks like the walls are too high for me to even get close to it to look back there in any which way, but um, I can pinpoint some spots out here where the audition and every, all the guys were out here um,
talking smack to each other. Hey, real funny, Fonzie. Let's check out this location. So when the boys are on their way to meet Carter Verone for their audition, there is a shot just like this. Let's try and get close. Just like this. They're coming down this road right here. And this curb right here can be seen in the shot as well as long as that pole and they stop right about here because this reddish orangish fence can be seen in the shot as well and then Fuentes says once we get in here you're on your own meaning they don't know each other however on the other side of the street here is where Fonzie and Fabio and all the other guys are here for the audition. They would have been backed in. I want to say there was a Mustang Celine, a Corvette, a BMW, a Yellow Viper, the Challenger, and the Yanko. All parked right here in this little grassy area. And then when Brian and Roman get out of the car, Fonzie goes, hey, where'd you get them cars out of Bobble's cereal box? He said, hey, real funny, Fonzie. He said they would have been parked, Brian and Roman, right over here, right across along that curb. And everybody else was parked right here. Only because I'm a big fan of Paul Walker, I'm gonna walk where he would have walked right here along this side as the other guys, Fonzie and Fabio and everybody else would have been walking right there. And here we have the house, Carter Verone's house, AKA Sylvester Stallone's house. Nice Escalade. Is that Sylvester Stallone? I don't know. Now there are two entrances to this house and I wanna say this one right here is the one that they had all walked through. Cause I remember seeing this little shack right here when um, they're all talking and stuff. And there's another um, entrance right there, but yeah. All of that was filmed right here. Yeah, the walls are too high for me to even... I wish I had a drone, that would have been sweet. Yeah, I definitely don't see it being this gate over here though. So that's definitely, definitely the right one. This is pretty cool. Actually, this is probably one of my favorite locations so far because I thought that they would have pulled in right here because there's a main road right there that you don't see. And then there's this road here. And this is the, the road that they had filmed on. Movie magic. So before I leave this location, I would just like to point out that the exterior scenes were filmed here also, out by the water, where Roman tells Verone that he goes, you know, your pockets ain't empty, cuz. And he takes his uh, cigar cutter, and he's like, hey, I'll, hey you, I'll take my cutter back. That was filmed behind the house. But it was definitely filmed here. Very cool. So there's a black Escalade that has gone through here at least two to three times. So I wanna say they probably own that house or live there. I don't know if Sylvester Stallone still lives there. I know he owns it, but I feel that my time has come to head on to the next location. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna be really quick about this location. This is the tag team race between Brian Roman, Fabi, and Fonzio. I'm coming up to the road now where that entire race was filmed. It'll look more recognizable here in a second. 
But this building here is the Jones Boat Yard. Man, those things are loud. So in the film, when Brian said he needs two other cars, they challenged Fonzie and Fabio to a race. And the Challenger and Camaro come running down or come driving down this street here. And Brian and Roman are parked right here. And then right there in the middle of the street is where they both would have uh, parked the for, uh, for the racing. First it was Roman and Fabio, and then it was Brian against Fonzie. And I'm actually gonna drive down this road and I'll drive back so I can show you the route that they all took. It's not really a route, but it does cut off down there at the end. But I just wanted to be really quick about this. It's really unnecessary. So I'm gonna get back in my car because I'm kind of illegally parked. You didn't hear that from me, but this is the road that they race down. Let's get in the car and go check it out. I'm not gonna match match up any shots because I don't have a lot of time here. So uh, I wanna go back and get in the car and drive down the road that they raced at. So right here along this curb is where Brian would have been parked while Roman was racing Fabio. And then Roman comes and he loses to Fabio. Brian takes off down this way and they race down this road here, down and back, tag team style. At one point, the losers will hand over them keys, or else they'll be eating breakfast through straws from now on. You understand? Caprende? Oh, this means you too. And of course, get stopped oh the bridge is going up so now I'm going the opposite direction back towards the starting line and I want to say over here in this little parking lot by this building is where that sign was set up that Fabio hits with his car and goes out in the middle of the road and knocks Roman crazy and he spins out and all that crap. So this is where they would have been heading back. And then Brian and Fonzie are neck and neck. Stops right here. And that's where they would have won. And there's a shot of them all of them going up this road after they won the cars. Man, I really wish I had a drone for this specific location. Guys, I am inside where they filmed the infamous scramble scene when Brian and Roman are trying to escape not only Verone, but the police, and they need two extra vehicles to get it done. Check this out. This is the building, the entire parking lot Oh my God, this is cool. I stopped over at the security gate and I asked the security guard if I could come up here to just get a couple pictures and videos and he said, sure. So I'm gonna make this very, very quick because I don't wanna overstay my welcome. So I'm gonna go closer over to the building and show you what it looks like because it looks like it's a convention center now, which actually makes perfect sense because it's a huge industrial building. But anyway, let's check out this location, the scramble scene. So right up there, that walkway, Going over the entrance is the same walkway that Brian and Roman are trying to get their exit strategy going with Tej. He goes, I think this will be the perfect place to do it. Check out this entire parking lot. You don't really see a lot of this in the film because I think there is like some buildings here. It looks like maybe some of it's been knocked down because I remember it was like in an enclosed area Let's head up this way. 
Man, I can just hear all those cars revving up. Yeah, see the Mana Winwood Convention Center. So the cops would have had, had this building surrounded. There would have been some helicopters up there. And he goes, where in the hell are they? We lost them. And then Brian and Roman both drive into these doors, which you can still tell they look like garage doors. They're closed and they have been made into doors that you can open that you can go into. But this is honestly one of the coolest things that I have ever have fortunate to witness to be able to stand here and walk around in the parking lot where the infamous scramble scene has taken place. Well, I guess maybe you could come in from that direction, but I know in the film there was cars going every which way, and I think they had that entrance blocked, and then it shows everyone going this way because Brian's like, y'all, let's break, and everybody starts heading out in this direction. So I do believe that there was a building off in this general direction, and everybody just takes off down the streets that way. And then it cuts to the eclipse and the spider exiting down that way come to find out it is Suki and Tej imposing as Brian and Roman and at the same time Brian Roman got the uh, Challenger and Camaro heading off with the cash in their car and I do want to point out that in the film being that um, there's a lot of locals here involved with this film so a lot of the cars that you see in the scramble scene a lot of those people actually lived here and put their cars in the movie and there's also another point that i want i want to talk about is that the supra that slapjack drives that had been repainted from the original supra from the first movie that brian drives the orange supra also the rx7 the Julius drives, or Jules, whatever his name is, that was Dom's car in the first film as well. So you can see where this is going. Also, this one's kind of funny. Suki's pink S2000 was actually Johnny Tran's car in the first film. How funny is that? They had just reused the same cars from the movie, and there was also a lot of locals here that participated in this film as well. How cool is that? This is so freaking cool, guys. How awesome is this? To be able to f be the first person to document this. I am so, so happy right now. So as the cops are in hot pursuit of Brian and Roman, the cops keep closing off different roads so they can't have nowhere to go, as the policewoman would say. But anyway, they come barreling through here cops on their tail and I'll tell you it is these two doors garage doors that they come out of and if you look at the screenshot it is in between this like formation here I don't know what you would call that like a railing barricade whatever and in between this barricade whatever you want to call it and it's the, not the first, not the second, but the third and the fourth garage door that they go through. So yeah, right where I'm standing is where they would have driven all the way from over there, which isn't really, isn't really far, but this is definitely the perfect place for this kind of scene they couldn't have done it any better i'm so happy to be the first person to be able to document this guys you don't know how much this means to me i love doing this and i love sharing it with you guys firsthand ah uh, so cool okay behind me is lamar lake it has been confirmed that the scene filmed here is the end of the movie and this will be the final stop on my Too Fast, Too Furious tour, if you will, the filming locations. This is where Verone gets on the boat with Fuentes 
And well, you know, the rest is history with Brian and Roman jumping the car onto the boat in the lake. A lot has changed since 2003. And I'm gonna try and pinpoint some stuff here, but it sort of looks the same. So let's check it out. Okay, as I am walking along the water here, this is the only dock that I seen when I drove in. And this is in fact, Lamar Lake. You can look it up, it has been confirmed, but this is the only dock that I saw. So, that being said, Verone's boat would have been parked right here at the end of this little dock. I'm gonna walk right out there. These little iguanas are cracking me up. Every time I walk over here, they keep running away from me. And there's one chilling right there on the dock. Sorry, little fella, gotta walk past you. Okay, bye. So this is where Fuentes, Eva Mendez, would have got on the boat. And they would have taken off that way and that goes out into the ocean down towards Miami. With that being said, now look how much has changed since the filming of this movie. This is all an open park. There you can rent um, kayaks and small boats. There are some over that way. All of this was overgrown and they have completely redone it. So Brian would have driven in right through here in the Camaro and stopped right about here. And then he gets out and he says, how many, Brian says, how many bags you got? And then the other bags are in the other car. And he said, the car is on the way. And we'll turn around and he's like, man, custom agents sure are getting pretty these days, huh? One thing that I do see that I'm gonna walk down here in just a minute is where Verone tells Enrique to get rid of Brian. The cars would have been parked right there. But look how much has changed since 2003. Looks like Verone's already out there. Shouldn't need to get my car and get in the lake. And I think this is pretty cool that this little location is still here, although there's nothing here from the film. But over in this general area is where Verone tells Enrique to get rid of Brian in the car. Brian would have parked his Camaro Probably, let's see, there was a hut right here. And then over here, there's a quick shot that shows an old bus. So Brian would have parked his Camaro probably right about here. And if we turn around this way, you get this shot. So his Camaro was here and the navigator that the other guy was driving was right there. And as Brian is trying to hit the button for the nitrous to hit the ejecto cedo cuz to send Enrique flying off into the water there, it doesn't happen. He keeps hitting the button and then he's like, what's that? What's that? And then Roman comes over the walkie talkie and he's like, it's Bosch though, baby. And there could be a very quick shot of him running or driving down through here and he wrecks into the navigator pulling the driver out beating the crap out of him and at the same time brian is beating the crap out of enrique and then once they kick the crap out of those guys they see i'm trying to think of the point of view i want to say it's right here where they stand and they see verone and fuentes fuentes i mean on the boat going that way as he sees them, as they see him on the boat, they run back over here and get back in the Camaro, kick the window out, and then they take back off, going back down this way in reverse. Oh, 
All right, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, right? So I want to end this video by saying a few things. First of all, I would like to say rest in peace, John Singleton. We recently lost him. Uh, he passed away. He was the director of the film. Without him, none of this could have been possible. Secondly, I would like to say rest in peace, Paul Walker. You know, we miss you. We love you. He had a huge impact um, on my childhood growing up. I was a huge fan of the first film. I even have a tattoo of the first race on my arm. Dom's RX-7 right here and Brian's Eclipse. Underneath says, dude, I almost had you. So I want to dedicate this video to them, John and Paul, and I'd also like to dedicate this video to all of the true Fast and the Furious fans that have stuck by all these years because we're going on 10 movies now. But I think a lot of you guys can agree that after the first two films, it kind of went eh. And um, the seventh film, uh, I hold near and dear to my heart because of the ending. And I think a lot of people will agree with me on that. Um, yeah. So I'd also like to say if you guys would like to donate, they're not paying me to say this, but I would like to inform people who don't know, Reach Out Worldwide is Paul Walker's charity. They go everywhere and anywhere for um, disaster reliefs, you know, hurricanes, tornadoes, um, all kinds of things that have happened. Um, consider donating to them. Um, it's his charity. Um, it'd be really cool if you did. I have numerous times. That's actually where I got this shirt from. Um, but yeah, these movies have definitely had a big impact on my life and I'm very thankful to have come here and done these locations and I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. I can't believe I'm in Florida finally. It's always been my dream to come here. Not, not only Florida but Miami in particular. I always told myself ever since I was little I said one day I'm gonna get to Florida and I'm gonna see where this movie was filmed at. And I'm almost 30 so what like 19 years? crazy to think right but anyways i'm gonna end things here guys thank you so much for following me around today i greatly appreciate it if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up i greatly appreciate it remember to comment subscribe share do whatever i don't care um but i will see you guys next time on jordan's film quest and i gotta get out of here because my pockets ain't empty cuz i'm hungry